Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings and even more blessings to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Monday night. I'm calling this Monday night with uh, Pastor G. I'm excited uh, about all of the things that are happening, all of the good things that are happening. Uh, and they are happening because it is the intent of God, our Father, for good things to happen in our lives. And I'm excited about the opportunity to uh, make you aware uh, of perhaps some things that you haven't thought about in the midst of this uh, chaos that we all are experiencing. I'm excited about your future. If you will, tonight, before I get started, I'm going to ask if you would please begin to share me with at least at least 10 or 20 of your friends. I won't be on long tonight, but there's something on my heart I want to highlight and uh, I am, I am uh, uh, so excited. We're in uh, the Christmas season. It's the season of love. It's the season that our hearts are open. And I want your heart to be open to hear tonight. I want your heart to be open to receive. I want your heart to be challenged tonight to believe God for something that you have not believed him for before. I want you to believe him for something that's bigger than your uh, job can supply, your resources currently can't supply. I want you to believe him for the things that you thought were, were no longer uh, possible. I want you to believe him for uh, the good things. I want you to believe. Now, it's, it, it's difficult because we're hearing about so many tragic things, so many moments, so many things that people are going through. And I get it. We are. We all are in, 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 in challenging times. But I believe that through faith and through understanding, we're going to transcend. We're going to be bigger. We're going to be better than we've ever been, uh, been able to even comprehend before. I just believe that. I, I, I just believe that it is a time uh, that, that you are going to uh, make history. Yes, let's, let's declare I will make history in this time that people said that it can't happen. I'm going to be a witness. My life is going to be historical. It's going to, be, it's going to go down in history. I'm going to do things that people in my position, uh, people that were, were, were born into the circumstances that I was born in, never could accomplish. I'm going to accomplish it. I am going to to do the impossible because I'm going to be empowered by the God that does the impossible. I'm going to live higher than I ever lived before. I'm going to be the thing that they said I couldn't be. I'm going to accomplish the things that I didn't even believe because of who I am and to whom I belong. I am greater than every scenario or circumstance that I face. And that's the mindset you got to have on tonight as we enter into uh, this uh, particular time of teaching. Let's go. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your word being truth. God, you don't say things that you don't intend to manifest. You don't declare a thing that you don't have the power to do. We thank you tonight for the power. We thank you tonight for the power to believe. We thank you for the, the energy and the strategy that comes in this particular time that many have believed to be a sad time because of the loss of loved ones. I thank you for the energy. I thank you for the strategy. I thank you for the things that you're dropping in their spirit right now. That is greater. They are greater. They are greater. They are living in greater times. They will experience greater things. The best time of their life will be experienced. This is the turning point of their life. They're going to see what they thought they could never see. They're going to see it happen in their life. And this is just a testament to your faithfulness. This is a testament to our faith. It will happen because of my faith. I thank you so much, God, for ever being the one that keeps me, for being the one that always takes care of me in my greatest time of need. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. You've never looked over me. But you are always there to assure me that I win in spite of what I have gone through. What I have, have, have experienced is not the determining factor. It's my faith in you that will allow me to go, come out of this. It will allow me to be bigger and better than I've ever been before. It will allow me to transcend all of the things that, that the enemy thought would kill me. I'm coming out better. It's not killing me. 
God is catapulting me into bigger and better than I've ever had, I've ever experienced before. And I thank you for it because you are God. You are my God. You always take care of me. And I thank you. 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 If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be enough to thank you for the things that you've already done, not even included the things that you've already planned for my future. So I thank you. It's in Jesus' name. I pray. Now share again. Share, 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 share. Thank all of you that are in the house. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, Dr. Nokia Smith, for being in the house. Uh, share, you guys. Thank you for Lita Finley for being in the house. Uh, Lady T, blessings to you. Tammy Willis, blessings. Ten, Tanzania Powell, thank you. Katrina Robson, thank all you guys for being in the house. I'm jumping into the work. This is called fatigued by the lack of faith. Fatigued by the lack of faith. This is a challenge that we're going to have to wrap our hearts and minds around. We're in a time of being fatigued. You've experienced it. You, you, you're in this moment where it seems like your, your energy and, 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 and inspiration, imagination is being robbed. And I went through uh, last week... A, a period of uh, experiencing some things. It was not because of I didn't have resources, I didn't have uh, enough. It was because uh, I believe that the Lord was allowing me to experience some things that people are experiencing. Because sometimes you'll go through some things and you'll think that you are the only one. You, you, and the enemy will cause you to think it was because of how horrible you are. And, you, and I know we do things. We, are, we already know when we commit certain things that it was not for us to do, but we did them anyway. And so he'll, he'll isolate us. He'll tell us how wrong we are. He'll condemn us. He'll, he'll tell you that you might as well forget about it. It's over for you. You will never accomplish the things that God told you. And now you're energyless. You feel like you're by yourself. You feel like you're on your own. You feel like there's nothing I can do. And we've all faced that particular time in our life. And perhaps you are right there now. And you are fatigued. You are fatigued because of your fate. Uh, you are fatigued because you can't uh, uh, find enough fate to believe God for things. And, and the reason why these things happen is because of what we've been taught. We've been taught so many horrific things, and then they've been second, and they've been third, and they've been, they've been uh, endorsed by, by ignorance over and over again. Remember the word ignorance is that they just didn't know. There are some people that told you some stuff that was told them. You're living out of what they experienced. And they feel like if I didn't accomplish it, I know I'm, I'm, I'm bigger and better and more than you are, you will never accomplish. So now their attitude toward you is, I don't want you to be disappointed, so don't go for it. Uh, 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 find something that's comfortable to set your heart and mind on and then go with that. And so what it causes you to live life medi medi in mediocrity. You, you, you never ever went after anything that was bigger than you because you were taught you don't need to be disappointed. You don't, you don't need to go after that. That's far outside of the things that you are able to accomplish. Now, when you hear that over and over and over, and I thank God for those that are able to get and, 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 and bust out of that uh, limitation that's placed upon you by people that you admire. I, I thank God for you, and there's many of you that are able to do it. But there's, there's others that you are now fatigued. You're fatigued, and it's because of the lack of faith. And then when you come into a season like the, uh, uh, the Christmas and Thanksgiving, and you start looking at all the things that are, are not happening or the people that you lost, the things that uh, should have went a certain way, now you are fatigued. And I want to talk to that tonight. We are fatigued uh, by the lack of faith by the lack of faith. Now, this is very interesting because you can be, listen to me very carefully, you can be a person of faith, but approach every situation in unbelief. I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Minister Vaughn and Jessica, for being in the house. You can be a person of faith or be the, a person of the faith and approach every situation. Initially, the approach is, with unbelief. You just cannot see that it'll happen like that for you. And so you can be a person. Now, I want to deal with some details because destiny is always in the details. 
And once I understand, see, I can never go or I can never obtain what I cannot define. I'm being defeated by my inability to define most of the things that I am facing. My, 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 that was an old uh, commercial. Uh, I used to watch cartoons as a young uh, boy on, uh, on Saturday mornings, and they say, FYI, knowing is half the battle. Knowing is half of your battle. If you can know, then you can, most of the times, you can come up with strategies. But when you don't know, there's no strategy. So you are now helpless to the things that you don't know. That's the key to all of all of our life is being able to know what exactly is happening. And so most of the time, we are, we are facing things that we don't have the proper information. We're not informed properly. You have the skills you can actually solve problems if you know. Now, that's the challenge is to know, is to desire to know. So we can be fatigued by faithlessness or, or the lack of faith and be people of faith, but approach everything through unbelief. It's got to be proven before you can believe. And it takes a lot of work. And then your expectations, uh, what you desire to prove things to you is not really, it's out of a fictitious world. And so we have to change these things. So when I am in uh, this fatigue moment because I approach everything with unbelief, because I don't have faith for it, what happens, I get drained mentally. This is why so many are drained now mentally. You are mentally drained. You are mentally drained. Now, there's no uh, a fatigue like the fatigue of being mentally fatigued. Man, when your mind is, 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 is uh, uh, fatigued, your body is soon to follow. You are soon to follow in fatigue because mentally, and that's what we're in. That's why we has, must understand that the battles that we face is spiritual. I know we live in a physical body, but your battle is, is, is in the spirit realm. And so to, to not be so deep, spiritual world means that my battle first starts in my mind. That's your greatest issue is in your mind. Now, when I talk about faith, and, and you can be a person of faith, but actually approach every scenario, every situation, every opportunity with unbelief. That's very easy to do. The Bible is full of those scenarios of people that were people of faith, but approach every situation. And, and, and it's because of the disappointments of your past experience or the things that you tried or the, dis, or the fact that you did not or you could not achieve. Now, I'm speaking to those of you, again, this, this stuff is essential, uh, it, it, it is, is over, over, you overthink it, especially in times like these. And we got to be aware of these times. They are pushed, they are push you into depression if you're not very careful. And I'm talking to people of faith. People of faith are the people that go through the, the worst cases of because they are told things that don't match with the word and they have expectations that are not in the word. Now, God is a, is a God that can actually work the impossible, but there is an instruction that comes before the impossible. And most of our stuff is superstition as opposed to, to the instruction. And we got to work this thing where we get to uh, where we are believing because my faith comes by what I hear. And so here's what is important to know about your faith. And these are basic things. And I want this because there's something I want to share that I believe that is going to be possible for this uh, 2023 year. 2023 is the year for the MVP. Now, I'm not just rhyming there. In other words, there are some of you that's been discredited in whatever phase of life that you are blessed to operate in. But this next year, because of your no, K-N-O-W, see, I always uh, uh, put it like this. Your no, K-N-O-W, determines how many times you take in or no for an answer. When you know, you cannot be denied. When you really know the information. And so we are challenged that uh, when we go through scenarios that we are denied, we are challenged to go back and improve our no, as opposed to saying they wouldn't let me and I can't do it because of this. Because when you know. So this year, 2023, the year for the MVP, here's what is going to happen. Now, now, the Lord gave me that because he was telling me that to expect something incredible to happen. And so the teaching tonight is fatigue by the lack, lack of faith. But this is a part of the series called uh, uh, Finish Strong. We ought to finish this year strong. We are in, in, in 12 months, and I tell you, I don't do numbers. I, don't, I believe that Jesus 
our Savior is the God of every day. But the Lord spoke this very diligently in my spirit. We are in the 12th month. This is the ending of the 2022 year going into 23, which is the year for the MVP. Here's what the Lord told me. 12 is in biblical numerology is, is, the, is the number for government. So there are some things that you're going to have to correct before you enter into your new year because with exposure comes exposure. You are about to be exposed. God is about to expose you to something that you've never been exposed to before. Somebody needs to say amen right there. You need to be in agreement with that because that word was exactly for you. Thank you so much for my brother Tori Delaney. Thank you for being in the house. Thank you so much, uh, 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 McCoy, my St. Louis people. Thank you so much for being in the house. Lamola, thank you so much for being in the house as well. Now, let's jump. Let's jump. So, so in this year, in, this, in the ending of the year, we're finishing strong, preparing. But our faith is the most important part. Our most valuable asset is our faith. And we must understand that our faith must be trained. Your faith must be, that your faith must be trained. If your faith is not trained, you will not enter to, into this next season strong. Say it again. If your faith does not see, we never was taught that our faith had to be trained. See, 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 we thought that our faith had to be big, never trained. I taught yesterday, I'm not going to go through that whole teaching, but I need you to go and look at this passage of Scripture, Luke chapter 17, verse number 5 and 6. There, see, see, we got to be meticulous about the Word of God. We got to understand that God is only obligated to keep His Word when someone has dealt with His Word in, in diligence and His truth. So when we talk about the size of our faith, we, we think that we don't get things because our faith was not large enough. But the Bible never says it was a According to the size of your faith. That, that's the thing that was taught us. The Bible says, and Jesus says, and I'm going to believe him, his, his apostles come to him and said, uh, Lord, increase our faith. They, they wanted to be big because there were some things that they saw him do that they said is evidently a part of our faith issue and we're not big enough. And then he goes about to reduce it. Look at the sixth verse of Luke chapter 17, verse number six. And, the, and this, this is what happened. He says, if you had faith, as a grain of mustard seed, as a grain, as, not the size, as a grain of mustard seed. Now, that's interesting because that changed the approach to the word faith. Now, faith is important for us to move into this next year. If we don't understand faith, we will be fatigued at everything we go after because it's going to require faith for us to obtain. It's going to require faith for us to get. And so we got to understand this or fatigue. We will lose all energy and strategy because of our fatigue because we did not understand. So now we're going through this month of December in correcting some thoughts so we can correct what's manifested to us. Our no will determine where we go. We've got to understand this. If you have not shared me tonight, you need to be sharing me right now. You need to be sharing. Please, 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 please share this now. Please share this now. Because I'm going to get into something interesting that I think is going to bless. And I say I think, I know without a doubt it's going to bless. So our faith in this season is a different kind of faith. And I was reading in Hebrews, again, chapter 11, verse number 24, 25, and 26. And here's the level of faith that you are going to have to have. It's not the faith to obtain, as we've always been taught our whole life. I, I, I got to have faith to get. But what God is, uh, is actually saying to you, the first level of faith to walk into your new season is the faith to be able to let go of. There are some things that govern your life now you got to let it go. It's some good things that's hindering your extraordinary things coming. There's some good relationships that are, that are hindering your best relationship or the relationship. And I told the people on yesterday that you are about to find favor with people that got favor. You are about to enter into the room with people because the Lord is going to set up these because his desire has always been that you be successful, be abundantly supplied. Because your heart has always been that when I get blessed, I'm going to bless. When I get to the place where I can, uh, can live the life that I want to live, I'm going to make sure that the people that are in my presence are living there too. And you've always had that, but you never had enough resources. 
You have it. Now, you've done the best that you could with what you had. But what the Lord is saying to you, he's about to expand your territory. And your faith is your most valuable tool when you understand. When you understand. Because he is aware that if you believe that faith cometh because of your hearing and you just went out to something and you didn't get it. So now you open up your heart to a bunch of garbage because evidently what I'm hearing is not enough. So I now I need to go to everybody that's got a quote-unquote revelation on faith and hear it. And now I'm hearing things that's actually counteractive, counterintuitive to what God has desired for me to have. So we got to be aware of that. The enemy is very, very cunning in this season when your heart is open to know what God wants to say. So we got to do it. Now, here's one thing I want you to know. Your faith has a governor. Your faith has a governor. Now, if you understand know anything anything about governors. A governor is something that determines the output of something, the rate of output of something. Your faith has a governor. Now, you need to know this. Here's where the fatigue, I'm going to explain why you're being fatigued by this season that you say that you're in faith. Share, 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 share. Please share. Please share, please share. So, so here, here, here it is. Here it is. Your, your, your faith has a governor. It, it's, it's something on your faith that determines the output, the manifestation rate. <laughs> so there is something, in other words, that would determine your manifestations in faith. Now, what is that called? Here's what it's called. It's called revelation. Revelation. Your revelation would determine. Your revelation will determine always your manifestation. If you are not, listen to me, if you are not in revelation, that's going to be a very difficult thing as well because you will be challenged to hear some things. God will lead you. You'll be challenged to hear some things that you never heard. You'll be challenged to, I'm going to say it again, you, you will be challenged to hear. Some of you, because of the importance of God, uh, 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 where the place that God desires to take you, he's allowing you to come into revelation. It's challenging you. I know, I know, I know, man. I know, I know that it's challenging you. But this is where we are. Now, please, whenever we get to this place that God releases, now, the, the scripture says that there is revelation or mysteries hidden from generation to generation. There are things that God has reserved for such a time as this. He didn't release it before. I don't care how powerful the man or woman of God, and they are, they are. I always reference uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 17, when Jesus tells his disciples who could not get a grasp of the magnitude of their calling, what they would be in the kingdom moving forward. He says this, he says, many prophets and righteous men desire to know what you know. And what he said, he said, it just was not given to them to know. Now, what he's emphasizing this and what I must emphasize is this. Just because they don't know, don't deem them unrighteous. Just because they don't know, don't deem them not a prophet. They had a time, a season, and a place, and they still got influence. But what God is saying, I'm raising up. I'm raising up. It's time for you to be ready to be raised up into you. It's, it's, it's time for you. Listen, this is a dilemma that we are facing, the new, the ones that God is gracing to be leadership in this new era. What you are uh, uh, fighting, you, you shouldn't be fighting. It's all right for you. I want to share this in, this in this teaching. It is all right for you to believe that what God dropped in your spirit can come to pass, even though it seems impossible. It can come to pass for you just like it did for them. Now, for some reason, you will come up against opposition when you say or speak what God has placed in your heart. You'll come against opposition from those that can't believe it. But it's all right for them not to believe. But you've got to stay in faith for what God has told you. Listen to me. There's some of you that's going to listen. You're listening live, and you're going to hear me on the replay. You are of age, and you think that every time the mention of, of new of something God is doing, a, a, a move of God, we always think new means young. That's not necessarily the case. There are many of you that are, are, are senior. Uh, when I say senior, you are of age. But the Lord is not done with you yet. But you will be challenged to hear revelation. I always make the illustration that generations 
Secular means everybody born in a certain year frame. frame uh, uh, if you're born in the 50s, you are that generation, 60s, of course, you know, and then, and then so forth and so on. But in the sacred world of God, in kingdom, generation is defined by those that are awakened to the revelation, the rhema of God that is flowing now. It doesn't matter how old you are. I make reference of my 87-year-old mother who is rebirthed in revelation. And God is, uh, God is desiring to use people of all ages, races. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't, please share me. Thank you, Missionary Betty. Thank you, uh, Ortiz. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Rodney Henderson. Blessings to you, Simone, Marsha. Thank you so much. Y'all share. Now, let's, let's move just a little bit further because we have been fatigued by faith. This is because our faith has a governor. There's some things that we desired that we didn't see. And so we are, we are wondering why, because I thought I believed enough. You know, you can believe to the limit of your governor, and you will be challenged to receive a word that opens. Faith is engaged by a word. Faith is engaged by a revelation. So you must be in the, in the word of God, a, what is called rhema word, a, a word for now. If faith coming by hearing and the only thing you heard was from 1970, you probably don't have faith enough to manifest in 2022. That's all I'm saying. And so you'll be challenged to hear. You'll be challenged to go after again. And so you're going to come before the Lord in this preparation season, the number 12, this 12th month of December. You are preparing. You are hearing. You are hearing again so that this 2023 year would be the year for your MVP. In other words, you're going to be the most valuable person in your family because of your faith, because of what your faith manifested, because of the revelation that you received. You, you're going to be able to do some things that your, your people thought was impossible coming from you. But because of who you are to God, he's going to allow it to happen. So you got to think big. You got to think outside of the box. So you have a governor on your faith. It's, it's, it's the, the thing that limits your, your manifestation. When Jesus says, according to your faith, be it unto you, that was him declaring that you must have more uh, 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 understanding of what the faith is so that you can have more manifestations in your life. Now, there are some that believe that there are people given different uh, opportunities in faith as it relates to the level or, or the size of their faith. Now, when Romans 12 verse 2 says it's been given to every man the measure of faith, that says something very interesting and very powerful to me. The means that there is only one. A measure means that there's several different ones. The scripture says every man has been given the grace. Now, it, the text also said by Paul that he should not think of himself more highly than he ought. Now, we thought that was high-mindedness, but let me dig into the text. Here's what Paul's saying. There is not a thing that you can get that's not available to other people that's got faith. So many times we think that there were certain things that were only privy to that person because of their title and because of their statue. But the, but the Lord says to you that if you had faith like they had, they are only tapping into some, some areas of faith that you can tap into. So they don't need to think of themselves more highly that I got something that you can't get. That's not what kingdom is all about. A kingdom is about all of us getting it. All of us through faith get it. That you should not think of yourself more highly than you are. I'm just quoting here. You need to go read it. It's Romans 12 too. Now, now check out what he says. It has been given to every man the measure of faith. Now, when I studied this text, I made the illustration that if I tell my son to go get a car, he will go out and say, now which one should I get? But if I tell him to go out and get the car, he know I'm talking about the specific. So the measure of faith is a specific Thing that God says you, and every one of us have been given the measure. Now, when I asked the Lord what was the measure of faith, then he took me to the book of Romans chapter 4, and he talked about Abraham, in whom we claim we live the blessings of Abraham. But Abraham had a faith that when he looked at his, his scenario, even though it looked dead at the time, he believed the God that promised. The Bible says that he hoped against hope. Hope is a derivative of what you heard. And if you are hearing that it's over, then you grab a hold to hope through the revelation of the word. You can tell what is said about you that the Lord has declared something different. And I'm going to live what the Lord said as opposed to what the, the, the system says. Uh, 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 
as opposed to what the number says, opposed to what the, the, the ideal concerning me, my measure in my condition. I'm going to live outside of that. And that's what I'm, I'm saying to you. So now the Bible says the measure and then the Romans 4 explain the measure. It's the kind of faith that call it those things that are not as though they already were. That's the measure. We have the faith from God, and it allows us to call things that are not as though they already were. Now, that right there is a good moment for you to start speaking to something that perhaps you heard it's over. You might have gotten a bad report. There's a good place to start speaking to the report. You're going to hope against hope. Hope is a derivative of what you heard. You might have heard someone say that it's very smart, someone that has studied in a field for a long time tell you that it can't happen. But here's the word of the Lord concerning that. That's not your end. Your faith will allow different outcomes. I will suggest to you that you begin to speak words of faith that defy your current situation. That's all you have to do. Speak words of faith that defy. Speak a word that defy what you heard. So now faith is governed by what you know. And I just explained that you have the measure of faith, the kind of faith that call it those things that are not as though they already were. We, we now understand that the Bible never said the size of a mustard seed. The Bible actually said as a grain of mustard seed. So Jesus then declares a teaching, uh, Matthew chapter 13. He says, the kingdom of heaven is lacking unto a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seed being planted. And when it comes and runs its full course, after the process, it, gets to the, it grows up to the biggest of trees that the birds of the air can land in. What is he saying? He's making a, 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 he's giving us a vivid picture of the small beginnings you should not despise. Because just because you started off as the smallest one in the group, don't declare that this is the end and this is all I'm going to get. Never judge your size by your eyes. Judge it through faith. And when faith is applied, all things are possible for whomever would allow God to do it for them. That's what the Lord is saying to you. That's what he desires for you to know, that there are some things that are about to come that are, you are going to be uh, uh, looking at, and through your natural eyes, it's going to say impossible, but through your faith eyes, watch this, your faith eyes, your faith eyes is going to say, go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, Go for it. So your fatigue in faith is that you've been expecting something that your knowledge or your revelation don't support. That's why it's so important that you understand it. That's why it's so important that you get that faith, again, is not predicated on size. Size doesn't matter. The Bible never said the faith the size of a must see. It says faith as. That means that there's a certain character to it. That means there's a certain attitude. It is activated by revelation. Since it's the faith of God, since every man's been given the, not a measure, the measure of faith, according to Romans 12, 2, I got to understand what is the attitude of that faith. It's the faith of God. It's the kind of faith that comes in your spiritual package. It call it those things that are not as though they, that's the attitude of your faith. That's the attitude. You got to know this. You got to know this. This is not built. Watch this. My faith is not built by a happening. Oh, my faith is not built. See, this is the faith of God. It is not built by a happening. We were taught that it's going to build your faith by a happening. It's not built by a happening. It's built by a revelation. Your belief is built by a happening. <laughs> what you would believe. But your faith is in your spiritual package. This is going to be the most important part of your takeover season. This is going to be the most important part of you being able to accomplish or to, uh, or to be bigger. Abraham was the father of faith. So he got a report from the Lord. He got a declaration that you will receive. Here's the declaration of the Lord toward Abraham. Uh, this is Genesis chapter 22. It says, in blessings, I will bless you. In multiplying, what is he saying? I will multiply. There are people around you that are blessed, but because of your revelation and understanding, I'm going to allow you to rise above those that are blessed, those that are multiplying. And it's all because of the understanding of your faith. Now, please hear me because I said faith is not a byproduct of a happening. There are so many people trying to replace revelation with sensationalism. This won't be a season of sensationalism sensationalism does not replace manifestation. 
<laughs> the enemy will try to sensationalize you, but there's a point that you're going to stop and say, look, I've never seen the manifestation. I'm jumping, but I'm not seeing what God said. So now, let me put legs, let me understand what God is saying, because I know that once manifestation comes into my life, I'm going to be able to dance. I'm going to be able to rejoice properly. This is the time we are moving in that we will expect manifestation because of our faith. My faith has a governor again. It is governed by my revelation. And if I don't get the proper revelation, I'm going to be fatigued. It is always the plight it has been of those that are of faith to approach every situation with unbelief. It's the very thing that has robbed you of your energy. <laughs> so, so there are many of you that are currently battling situations and it feels like you are in the fight of your life. The fight of your life. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to believers. I'm not talking to people. On the, uh, I'm talking to those of us that are of the fake community. You are in, it, it seems like you are in the fight of your life. And you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that if you're not in this moment, you're not included in what's to come. Because there are some attacks that are happening, for people, happening to people that are crucial for this 2023, the year of the MVP. The enemy is trying to throw everything at you that he possibly can to make your mind veer off what God said to you. You've been hit by multiple things, bigger things than you ever. And you feel like you're in the fight of your life. And it appears in your mind, be careful. Because the enemy is going to show you. It's going to appear that what you're going through, you, you have prayed diligently for, and there's no response from your father. There's no response from God. You, you, it's, it's, a, it's a shame that you have to go through this. After all that you've done, after all the commitments you have committed to, and now you're going through something, and it's, 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 it seems like he's not showing up. Now, listen to me very carefully, because there are some of you that are going through right now, you actually are continuing in what you do. You've been faithful to the doing, but you got this question in your mind. Why is it that I'm doing all these things, but I'm not seeing the manifestation? I'm not seeing, my, it seems as if my prayer is not answered. That's where the fatigue comes, because you're working and it seems like you have no direction. I'm just doing what I do. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that there is something that is coming. The Lord is about to answer are you ready for an answer? He's about to answer you. So you're in the fight of your life. You prayed hard for this. There is no answer. And so what is escalating, what is accentuating this dilemma is the fact that you've already, 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 you've already started thinking about the next challenge that is going to come. See, the 2023 year when people are declaring the blessings, you're in the fight of your life right now in 2022. You have not heard the answer to your prayer. You're wondering how can these things happen. Now, watch this. The battles have already begun. The 2023 battles are already here while you're still in 2022. <laughs> this is where, listen to me, your fatigue is produced. That's where the fatigue is produced. It's because, watch this, here's the key, your outlook, your outlook, your outlook on life does not have any victories. Your outlook on life, though, does not include victories. This is why you're fatigued, because you've been working hard because you're a hard worker. You, it seems like I haven't gotten any direction from God. I've been praying. I haven't heard anything, but I'm diligent. I work. I'm, I don't give up on anything. So now fatigue has set in. And you've already started the next year better because you know it's going to be a challenging year. Because every, every, every level, there's a different challenge, and you've already gotten into your 2023 year, and you're still in the battles of 2022. That's why you're fatigued. When you have experienced, hear me, a series of losses, when you have experienced a series of losses, <laughs> when, you, when you can't even see in your future, that you are going to have some wins, some victories. It gets very difficult. <laughs> Here's something I want you to consider. Here's something that I need you to think about. Here's something I need you to really focus on. Because we're talking about 2023 compounding, accentuating, escalating your, your stress level 
when you're, or when you're in 2022. You got enough on your plate right now, but you're already, you're already, you're already anticipating what is going to happen in 23. Here's something that you must, because the battles are here, here, here. Here's something that I need you to consider while you're contemplating. Your future is currently, listen, 2023, right now in 2022, on December the 5th, 2023 is only currently in your imagination. Now think about this. 2023, even though you're anticipating what you're going to encounter, how difficult it's going to be, remember, it's only in your imagination at this point. It's only in your mind. This means, watch this, that the victories and defeats are only in your thoughts. This is important. 2023 at this point is only in your imagination. You're not there yet. So it can only be lived out in your mind, in your thoughts. So the victory or the defeat is only in your mind. It's only in your thoughts. Now, 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 now. <laughs> Here's what is so, so frightening. Here's what is so frightening. What's got you scared? Listen to me. What's got you scared? What's got you frightened? All the thoughts, all the thoughts, the things that you, 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 you're thinking right now. It's only in that thought pattern. It's only there. It's not real right now. It's only in your thoughts at this point. Now, here's what I would suggest. And, and because what you are afraid of, because you, of what you are anticipating is only in your mind, you have the authority. You have the right. Watch this. To write the victories. You have a right to imagine the victorious outcome of 2023. You have that right because right now, again, 2023 is only in your mind. It's only living in your thoughts. You have the right at this current time to think yourself happy. You have that authority. Think yourself happy. Uh, Acts chapter 26, Paul is on trial and this could determine his fate. That left life or death is in this trial. And he's standing before the, the king, and he says, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to speak for myself. People have been speaking for me. People have been saying what and how I am going to react to a certain thing. But now that I have the opportunity to speak to myself, I think one, one of the most powerful statements in Scripture is when Paul says, I think myself happy. I think, now, now, now listen, he's on trial. He could anticipate that this would be horrible, but since the verdict is not in yet, since 2023 has not even made it here yet, everything that you are thinking about that scares you is only in your thoughts. You have the authority to think yourself happy. You have the authority, since it's all written in your imagination, to rewrite the script in your mind. You can write the victories in there that you desire. You can say that 2023 would be the year that I excel past all of the things that every enemy told me I would never do. You have the right. You have the right to write in. You have a right to repaint the outcome of 2023. Since it's only living in your thoughts, you have the right to rewrite your story for 2023 right now. This is why this is so important. This, this 12th month of 2022, the month of, of governing, or the month of the things being governed, you need to write some things down. You need to think about some faith moments that are about to happen that's going to exceed, going to excel past your ability to perform. You need to do it. It's, it's in an a, a emergency that you do this. This is what the Lord wants you to do. Because once you start thinking it, once you apply the faith to the right thoughts, he's going to start manifesting. He needs something to work with. God needs you to give him something to work with. That's why the Bible is saying to us that the battle of our life, the fatigue of our life is mental. We are anticipating uh, 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 losses when we haven't even gotten to the time. 2023 is only in your head. Rewrite it. Rewrite it. Say what's going to happen. Say it because what you say is going to be what you see. Say it. Say that I will. I will be. I believe well enough. Nope, you can't leave well enough alone. You got to say it. You got to believe God for it. You got to tell what you have seen in your head. You got to tell it what God is saying so that you'll start thinking according to God's plan. 2023 is supposed to be a year of victories for you. 
you got to have faith. Listen, you got to have faith for this. You got to have faith for this. You got to have faith for this next year. You need to begin now. You need this faith session to start now. You need to be in faith now. You need to be in faith. You need to have the kind of faith that's got the attitude that if I encounter it, I'm going to overcome it. If I encounter, I'm going to overcome. I won't lose this next year. I will have some scuffle, but I'm going to win. I'm going to win because my faith will allow me to win. Now, here's what faith is. Faith is believing with a corresponding action. Now, what is faith? Faith is believing with a corresponding action. You're going to have to believe something, and then there's a, the proper action that is going to come along. Now, this segue me, this gives me the proper segue into this next thing that I want to put on your mind, because this is the time. Every divine intervention, and you will see many of them, you need to expect that there will be a divine intervention in this next year, 2023. So, in December of 2022, go ahead on and open yourself to expect divine interventions to get practice for your 2023 year. Start the practice sessions now. Allow God to do something because of your faith now. Now listen, every divine intervention is initiated by an instruction. Every divine intervention is initiated by an instruction. What did you say? This next season, 2023, the Lord is going to give you instructions. You got to prepare yourself to be instructed and given instructions for the initiation of this divine intervention. I know you want to see some big things happen, but God is not going to do it without your participation. There is an instruction that you will have to follow. Now, real quickly, and I got to end because my time it's up. Wow, time flies when you're having so much fun. Now, a divine instruction. I'm going to go to a biblical passage really quickly so that I can give you a picture of what 2023 looks like for those that are in faith, those that, are received, that will receive the revelation of God and understand that this is going to give my faith the proper attitude and it's going to cause me to see things manifest in my life that was impossible before. But every divine intervention will come with an, an instruction. It's going to be initiated by an instruction, get ready. Now, in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, we know Jehoshaphat. There's a story of Jehoshaphat. Now, there's something interesting in, in, about Jehoshaphat's life, and this is going to be 2023. Jehoshaphat has gotten a, a, a report, has gotten a, a text or email. I'm just using some, some 2023 uh, 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 words. And, he's, and, and, and in the text, in, in, in the email, he's, 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 he's told that there are some enemies that's mad at you. There's some, things, there's some things that are about to come against you. Not just one thing. There are several things that each of them have the power on their own to defeat you. Now, I think it's so interesting that he gets this uh, message and each of the things that are going to come against them have the power to overcome. Now, you are in that scenario right now. You're looking at several things that have the power to overcome. Now, you might possibly have the, the wherewithal to take care of this one thing, but you got five things coming against you. And watch this. Watch this. Each of them have the power. Now, now why would God allow me to... to, to, to to have to go through this. It's because it's not the thing that you see. He just needs you to come to a position. What is that position? That I can't win against none of these. I'm going to need some help. That's all God is trying to get you to say is I need some help. Now, the rule to all fights is this. Weapons will form, but they won't prosper. So when God allows you to see something, don't worry about what you see because he's just looking for an attitude. What is the attitude? I am helpless. That's all God needs you to know. It, it, this is all he desires for you to say is, I am what? Helpless. Helpless. What does this mean? I'm helpless, not hopeless. It's all right to be helpless because you get help. But when you get hopeless, that means you lost faith. I am helpless, but I'm not hopeless. I'm looking at some scenarios and I'm helpless again. That's okay because my hope is in the one that can win against every scenario. So when I read this story, when I, when I jumped into this, 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 man, this is such an incredible, Jehoshaphat the king, a righteous king, is experiencing a threat. 
that just because you're righteous, just because you've done everything right, just because your heart was to obey God, it does not exempt you from seeing attacks or looking at attacks come over your life. Now, how this whole story uh, jump started, and I want you to see this in the 18th chapter, I believe, in the 18th chapter of this Second Chronicles, chapter 18, uh, Jehoshaphat, uh, who is a righteous king, has uh, uh, made himself. Uh, available or come into alliance with an unholy king. Now, this is important to the story. I'm just going to give you these nuggets. And so what uh, the Lord does, he sends a, a prophet to him, and, and the prophet actually rebukes the king. The prophet says to him, you know, you were in an unholy alliance with an unholy man, and God was not pleased with your unholy alliance. And now this is interesting because what is going to happen moving forward in this 2020 end, 2022 end into 2023, there are some alliances that you have had with some people that was not conducive for your next level. And so God is going to tell you, you're going to have to break that off. And, and the prophet actually tells Jehoshaphat this. Jehu says to him, you know, there should be some rap that come on your life, but because of who you are to God, he's going to let you go past it. That's what the Lord is saying. He's not going to hold you hostage to the unholy alliances that you had. He has forgiven you. Now, he's trying to build your faith so that you can start expecting for things to happen for you in this 20. He's relieving, he's removing all of the things that you thought was going to stop you from coming into to your wealthy place. So all of the things, all of the unholy alliances, all the things you indulged in, all the things you got wrapped up into, number one, he says, I'm going to forgive you. It's done. Let's move forward. You got good things in you. Your heart is good. Let's move forward. Now, in the 19th chapter, Jehoshaphat began to put things in order. That's what this is all about. This teaching is all about. He began to set the whole nation in order. He began to set everything. He got the instruction. He began to set everything on. This is what the Lord is saying. Set it in order because I'm ready to catapult you into the new levels. So Jehoshaphat first got forgiveness for his unholy uh, alliances, the things that he was connected to that was not profitable, even though it seems like another king. No, nope, I didn't tell you to do that. You got to be careful who you attach yourself to. Uh, you got to make sure that those things that you were attached to that was not conducive, go head on and detach now. Get rid of it. Now you put everything in the line because every Every supernatural intervention will come with uh, uh, or be initiated by an instruction. And so he's saying, get this in together, get it 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 together. I'm instructing you, get it together. You are not exempt from ex instruction. You cannot say that I can't do that. Or I, don't, I don't think, I just think the Lord just needs to do it in spite of. He says, no, I'm giving you an instruction because I'm moving for those that are mature. I'm giving my, my wealth to those that can follow instruction. So he's giving instruction. So Jehoshaphat begins again, to follow the instruction, put everything in place. Now we're at the 20th chapter, and here's my focus. The Bible says at the verse 1 of the 20th chapter, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and them others, and with them others beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat. There are several things that are coming against him. Now, listen to me very carefully because I need you to know this. This is after he had put everything in place. This is after he had heard the instruction from the prophet and he began to get his life in order. In other words, when you start trying to get your life in order, you're going to start hearing all the threats. What should I do? Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. You're going to hear it because of the importance of your call for this next year. Stay focused. You're going to hear people that you trust. You're going to hear people that you thought was there. You're going to have people. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay in faith. So Jehoshaphat gets everything in line, but there is still a threat. That's okay. Stay focused. Stay focused. Here's what Jehoshaphat does, and I think it's going to be very important for this 2023 year. Here's what Jehoshaphat done. He went to all of his people and said, let's all go before the Lord. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how young you are. We all need to hear from God. I think 2023, here's the most important part of the success of 2023. It's already set in place by God. He can accomplish everything that he promised you. But here's what he's asking. Will you acknowledge me in all your ways? Will you consult me? Because every divine, every divine, every divine 
intervention will be initiated by an instruction. God is meticulously trying to put things in place, and you need to be focused. And so Jehoshaphat said, I need everybody that's in my company to be focused. You're going to get focused. And so he put everybody on a fast. Everybody is going to be focused. Everybody is going to get focused. I need everybody to be hearing God. Because there's an opportunity set before us, and the only way we get it is that we are focused, that we are hearing properly. So the 20th verse, 20th chapter, first verse said, even though he had put everything in order, here's what happened. The enemy started trying to attack or showing himself as an attack. As they were praying, as they were prepared, as they were in fasting, as they were in prayer, here's what happened. And this is going to be very beautiful because uh, 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 usually when you hear of things coming against you, you start searching outside yourself for answers. You start going and calling this super duper uh, uh, person to get an answer. You start calling them to get an answer. You start calling over here to get an answer. But what happened in the life of Jehoshaphat and his people, there was a word from the Lord that came out of one of the sons in the house. In other words, your answer to the dilemma in this next season is going to come out of your own house. God is going to speak to you this time. He's going to tell you this time. Now, listen to me. I'm not against, I'm not saying that you won't get prophetic words, you won't get inspiration for other people. But what you're about to get in this season is confirmation, not always information. You are going to go before the Lord yourself and say, speak to me. I need to know that's where the true confidence comes from, when you get a direct connect from the one that promised. You're going to hear him say, it is your time, it is your season, nothing will stop you. That's what you're going to get. So Jehoshaphat, as they are praying, as they're before the Lord, the Bible says that there's a word that came from out of their own house. We don't have to call nobody in for this one. This word is going to come right from the inside of us. That's what you're going to see this next year, 2023, the year of the MVP. I want to read from uh, this Second Chronicles 20. Verse number 13, that's so much to it. I admonish you to go read this on your own. The Bible is so beautiful. Go read the Word of the Lord. Now, here's the 13th verse of Second Chronicles chapter 20. It says, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. No one was exempt. Everybody's coming before the Lord. As for me in my house, all of us is going before the Lord because all of us is expecting God to do great things. Now, listen to the 14th verse. Then upon Jehazareel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of all, they're given a whole genealogy, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. This is why I'm telling you, it's coming out of your house. It's going to come out of your house. If you can't, if someone lying is busy and you can't get a hold to them, don't worry, because you're going to hear, you're going to hear this time from the word of the Lord yourself. Now look at the 15th verse says, And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Now listen to the instruction. Here's what the Lord is saying to this 2023 year. Here's what the Lord is saying. Every divine, there's a divine intervention come, but it's going to come with an instruction. Here's what the instruction was from the, the, the son of, uh, 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 of the house. And he said, hearken ye Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehovah. Thus said the Lord unto you. Here's what the Lord is saying unto you. I'm talking to you, 2022, December the 5th. I'm speaking this into your life now. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Here's what the Lord is saying. There are several things that is coming against you that is trying to, 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 to scare you or trying to make you afraid. Not just one thing, several things. But as the prophet, the young son, said to the, the nation and to the king, be not dismayed because of all that you see. The Lord says this is his battle. When you follow his instruction, he will fight for you. He will, he will rebuke the devourer. He will. Somebody need to receive it. I'm prophesying to you. He will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When you are following the instruction of the Lord, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've encountered. I don't care how many unholy alliances that you had like Jehoshaphat, the 18th chapter. I don't care as long as you disconnect and get yourself in a position that I want to hear from God. I want to obey God. He says, I don't care what the past was. Let's go down. I will fight for you. I will do what I promised you. 
The Lord is saying to you, he's going to do this next year what he promised you. Now listen to it. I'm going to get momentum with the 15th verse into the 16th verse because this is a prophetic word the Lord told me to share with each of you that are under the sound of my voice. Here's what the prophecy was. And he says, Hearken ye all Jerusalem, all Judah, and all Jerusalem, and thou King Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Now listen to the 16th verse. Tomorrow go ye down against. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zez, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. In other words, the Lord has given them specific instructions and strategy on how you're going to win in this next year. This is, this is unusual for you, that the Lord will tell you where to posture yourself, where to sit up, where, where to post up at, in other words. You stand here, and I'm going to send them right by you. You stand in position. This is why the instructions of the Lord is so important for our lives and for our success. This is why we got to get focused. Ye shall not need to fight, the 17th verse. Listen, ye shall not need to fight. Ye shall not need to fight physically. Ye shall not, listen, did you grab it? Ye shall not need to fight. Here's what the Lord is saying to you. This 2023, this supernatural intervention is going to come with an instruction. You got to follow instruction. I don't care how big the enemy is. He says, disregard them. I don't care what circumstances are facing you. Disregard that. Follow my instruction. Follow my instruction. I will give you how, I will give you where, and I'll give you when. That's what the Lord's saying to you. No more excuses. No more I never, no more I couldn't, no more what did and how many times it happened. That's over. Follow the instruction. You shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. With you, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now, I thought he said, I didn't need to fight. He said that exactly. Your fight is not physical. Your fight is instructional. You are fighting against the word of the Lord. If you go to where he said, you will see that he's winning there. Your fight is to obey God. Your fight. They knew that the battle was not there. They knew that God was sending them out there so that they can see him win. You got to posture yourself so that you can see. You can see the wind. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. I'm giving praise to God because he just told me I'm going to win. It's not going to be difficult. I'm going to win and I'm not going to have to go through all the things that they told me. I'm going to win and I, I don't have to have the resources and all the things that they told me I had to have that caused me to know I was defeated before I left home. I don't have none of that. He says, this is a win season. And, 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 and you got to be in praise constantly. you got to thank God constantly for allowing you to win. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? This is your win time. 2023, you're going to be the MVP. The people that discredit you are going to see that God is behind you. You're going to be accomplishing things that they said you could never do. But because of your hearing the instruction of God, because of your focus, and because of you being in faith, and you believing, and you're following the instruction of God, you're going to see God move in your life like you've never seen God move in your life. And Jehoshaphat began to worship. Why? Because even though I got resources, and people think just because you got a lot of money, you are automatically winning. Jehoshaphat is thanking God because money couldn't supply what he needed. Money couldn't supply the win this time. Money couldn't do it. Money is not always the, the key to winning. The instructions of God, when I follow the instruction, he'll do for me that money, the things that money can't do. He will. 19 verse. And the Levites of the children of uh, Kahatz and the children of uh, Korah stood up in praise. The Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Now watch this. 20 20 is, is the verse that we all have heard our whole life. Here's what 20 verse says. It says, And they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa under the instructions of the Lord. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of 
Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye prosper. Believe the word of the Lord concerning uh, what I just told you. And there's going to be the season of prosperity will be upon your life. You're going you're gonna, to you're show forth the praises of the Lord even in your mouth work as well as your physical work. Why, how God is going to bless you so tremendously. Now, the ending of this story and the ending of this uh, teaching, I don't went over my time. I did not mean to be here this long. Here's the ending of it. Jehoshaphat positioned Je- in, the, in the nation position itself as the word of the Lord had commanded them. And they watched the enemies that had came together to devour them, devour one another. God is going to show you something that everything that had come into agreement, remember the beginning of the text, well there are several enemies and each one of them had the power to, de- to demolish you. But what the Lord did because of your following of instruction, he took every one of them and caused them to come against one another. And the Bible says, if you read the story, that Jehoshaphat and them went down after the last two soldiers uh, posing for it, took their sword and stabbed each other at the same time and both fell out, the Lord sent them down into the valley of the dead. What happens is they began to spoil. They began to take so many gifts out of this. That is a very vivid prophetic picture. You are about, we've been living in a season of dying and dead things. What the Lord is saying to you is that you are about to win in the midst of the things that have been losses, things that have died, the things that have been considered dead. You are about to see the blessings of the Lord in multitude in that very place because of your faith. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the word for your word, for your faith, for your instruction, and for my manifestation, because I have believed you. I'm not looking at the circumstance. We're not looking at the circumstance. We're believing what you said over the circumstance. So I thank you. I thank you that this year we are finishing strong, believing you for this next year being our MVP year. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for being faithful to each of us. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for giving us peace in the time of of, of great challenge, God. It's your desire that I live happy and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Again, we have Sunday night, we have Sunday, um, this is Monday, and I will finish this off tomorrow, Tuesday. Make sure you don't want to, I'm going to pick up where I left off. I'm going to pick up where I left off. There, I'm going to pick up in the prophetic word that I left off. This is your time and your season. You can't take the word of the Lord for granted. Listen to me. There are specific things that you must hear. There are, I'm saying again, there are specific things that you must hear to engage the kind of faith or give your faith the attitude that is needed to do these impossible things, to call those things that are not as though they are. There are certain things that you got to hear. The faith of God is engaged by the Word of God. You got to be careful that what you hear is the Word of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. And if your faith is not being engaged, it's because you're not hearing the Word. You're hearing something that sounds like it. But there's a spirit in the Word, and you got to know this. I am appreciative to all of you. For those of you that want to sow into network ministry, let me give you the cash app. Let me give you the cash app. Let me give you the cash app. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for, for, for his word on tonight. Thank the, word, thank the Lord for his, his. Listen, believe with me. Let this word, go back and listen to this again and share. Let this be your build up for tomorrow. There's some things that need to happen tomorrow. There's some significant happenings need to happen at the end of this 2022 year. That needs to be momentum in, 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 in your divine intervention for your 23 January 1. You need to be well in, 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 in process of being and getting and doing everything that God has promised you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mom, for being in the house. I see Priscilla Jones in the house. Uh, Destiny Brown, blessings to you, Destiny. Uh, uh, of course, Lady T is in the house. Uh, Felita Finley, thank you. Tammy Atman Willis, thank you. Thank you so much. Steve Wilson, blessings to you, man. Uh, Alvin Withers, blessings, man. Blessings to you. Baba Gaither, blessings to you. Uh, who has uh, Apostle Dennis Cooks, blessings. Uh, David Boyd, Pastor David Boyd, blessings to you. Annie Brockman, by your blessings. Sonia Pettis, blessings. Janetta, 
Thank you so much for being in the house. Janetta Goss, blessing. Uh, uh, Simona Marshall, blessings to you. Pastor Rodney Henderson, my friend, Tori Delaney. Uh, Shakita McCoy, blessings to you. Blessings to you, Reggie. Blessings to you. Missionary Betty Ortiz from, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Africa. Yes, Nigeria. Blessings to you. Tans. Zanea Powell, blessings, 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 and blessings again. If you're just coming in, I promise you, you want to hear this word again. This is not, see, so often we just think, this is, this is the problem with manifestation. Again, again, uh, sensationalism will not replace manifestation. And when you get to a place where God has opened up the door for manifestation, you need to calm some things down. You're going to be challenged to calm down. You can hype things up, but you need to be challenged. Calm down because there's an instruction that is about to come in the calm, in the calm. Listen to me. It's going to come in the calm. It's going to be difficult to calm yourself. It's going to be difficult. But when you calm yourself to hear what the Lord is about to say, it's going to change your life. It's going to do more for you than, 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 than all of the things you thought were the things that make your life work. I'm telling you from experience, it's better to be a person that is hearing God and being uh, uh, blessed by the hearing as opposed to doing all these things and seeing minimal results. Please hear what I'm saying. This is going to be crucial. 2023 is the year of the MVP. Listen to this again. Share this to several people. Again, share it with several people. All right. Thank you guys so much. I am out of your hair. I will see you tomorrow night at 630 Tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. That's our regular Tuesday night Bible study. There's something I want to dig into. There's something I want to, I want, I want to share something. You know, I, I, I thank the Lord for allowing me to go. There's some things that's been uh, resonating, that's been in my spirit for quite some time. And, and, and I, I am so, I try to be re so responsible with the word of the Lord. There are some things I'm not trying to say to be the first one to say it. I, I, we are responsible to make sure what we utter, there's a, there's a backup plan so that we can explain why we said what we said, how we come to the conclusion, how we, how we, we've got to be that. We've got to be that so that the people of God can eat it and then grow into the giants that they are supposed to be. Thank you so much. Tomorrow night, we'll even go more in depth with it. Thank you so much. I, assure, I, I appreciate you for tuning in as always. Thank you. Thank you. And have the night of blessings that you deserve. Sleep well tonight. Get up tomorrow energized. Be ready for your day to be explosive. Thank you so much, uh, Apostle Brenda Hendon. Blessings to you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I am out of here. I start with a blessing. I'm going to end. I, I call it a prophetic word. Lady T, we always say this, saying good morning is prophetic. Blessings on blessings on blessings is prophetic. And I say it to you, blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings until tomorrow night, 630. Blessings, share this, share this, share this. Blessings on 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 blessings. On blessings.